King Kong's a 1976 American monster adventure film produced by Dino De Laurentiis, who had a hand in the Death Wish series stars Charles Bronson. Kong, 1976, directed by John Guillermo, notable for his temper in his 1974 classic, The Towering Inferno, where a building is on fire. Towering Inferno. McQueen. Paul Newman. Kong 76, as I like to call it, marks the first remake of the 1933 film of the same name. This will be the fifth film with the giant ape falling behind King Kong 1933. Son of Kong, a direct sequel of the 1933 film, King Kong vs. Godzilla, which I'll get to in later, and King Kong Escapes, both films produced by Toho. The idea to produce this film came from the future and former Disney CEO Michael Eisner, who proposed the idea to Universal CEO Sidney Schinberg in 1974. But Italian producer Dino De Laurentiis didn't waste any minute, didn't waste time. Once he got word, he quickly acquired the rights from RKO Pictures, Kong's rights holder, for the release of the film. For the release of the film, the Laurentiis Universe and RKL had a big dispute about the rights of Kong, but I will cover that in a later video. King Kong was released in the winter of 1976 by Paramount Studios to commercial success, earning $26 million. Now, let's get into the plot. The plot! Fred Wilson, played by Midnight's run Charles Gordon, the executive petrol oil company, Mounts an expedition to an island in the Indian Ocean named Skull Island. There's rumored to have untapped potential of oil deposits, a fortune to his oil company. Along the way, Wilson and his crew discover Jack Prescott, played by Jeff Bridges, a primate paleontologist who wants to see the island for himself. Bye, sneak it onto a boat. Name the picture of explorer. Wilson, distrusting Prescott's motive, thinking he's a spy for the rival company, decides to take him to the rig. But before he can do that, Prescott, Wilson, and the rest of the crew discover a young woman lost at sea named Dawn, played by Jessica Lange in her first Hollywood role. The ship discovers Skull Island and encounters the inhabitants of the island who want Dawn as a sacrifice. The crew rejects the offer, but the natives get their way by taking the young blonde for the sacrifice to the island's god, Kong. Well, Kong comes along, takes Dawn, while the crew is in high pursuit. Kong, along the way, develops a liking to Dawn until he fights a large snake and himself is captured by Wilson who thinks Kong will be a great asset and promotional tool for the company. Only after he finds out there's no oil on the island. Plus they say, go on. While on the way back to New York City, Kong becomes distressed at his new captivity, causing a stir on the boat while he's calmed down by Duan and Jack. Once back in New York, Fred Wilson uses Kong as, of course, that promotional tool, which is basically a sideshow, Within a stadium, could have been the old Met Stadium. I don't know, doesn't matter. Kong, distressed at his new surroundings once again, and desperate to search for his new love in Guam, which he thinks he sees, breaks out and causes a stir and ruckus amongst New York City. Like I said before, Kong escapes, killing Wilson by stepping on him. He chases Jack and Dawn across Lower Manhattan, causing all kinds of mayhem, taking up trams and subways. Eventually, Kong captures Dawn, taking her up the former World Trade Center South Tower. The city is under national emergency with the military in pursuit. Jack follows Kong and Dawn to the South Tower. On top, Kong is harassed by the military. They start to shoot at him and eventually ultimately seals his fate. But before Kong is shot by a helicopter. He releases Dawn. Kong falls to his death as the crowds of people below 
crawled around his now dead corpse. Dawn in distress, trying to get back to Jack who's in the crowd. She also pleads, but nobody cares. Nobody listens. The movie ends. Now, like I said about this film, it was a commercial success. And it led to a 1986 sequel called King Kong Live, starring Linda Hamilton. Uh, well, this film didn't live up to this film, but yeah, it was a film. But this film, Kong 76, did win Best Visual Effects at the Oscars. The film will also influence two former Universal Studios attractions, The King Kong Encounter in Hollywood, one that I had to experience to actually get on. And this one actually burned down to the ground in 2008. And the other, Confrontation in Florida, that shut down in 2002, replaced by Revenge of the Mummy. Now, what did I think about this movie? Hmm, it's alright. I would have to say some of the effects were uh, sketchy at best, but they did use practical effects. Plus, it was the 1970s, so we weren't going to get no boom and CGI and all kinds of other stuff that we see now these days. Now, compared to the 2005 and 2017, it's behind, like I say, it's behind cosmetically. It's not a bad movie, though. It's a good story about, um, basically, it's just the original story in the 1933 one with, um, upgraded practical effects and made for the modern time, and this time not using the Empire State Building, but using the World Trade Center, both of them, actually, South and North Towers. Uh, I had to give it a uh, 7 out of 10. But once again, it was my first Kong film, so it kind of sticks with me. And uh, it's not as good as the theatrics as we've seen, like I said, the 2017-2005. But mainly, there's just the, the thing that I have problem with it. Probably, I don't know if anybody else has a problem with it. It's a trip to Skull Island. It's not as gruesome as 2005-2017 are, but it was simple simply made you gotta think it's the 1970s where studios were um more streamlined and try to not spend so much on the budget like they are now now the actor performances are not a bad either even for jessica lange in her first movie where she would go on to be actually a great actress because i do enjoy her parts in the american horror story tv show and plus so yeah, that's pretty much how I feel about Kong 1976. Not much, but like I said, this is the first review of many. I don't know who's coming next, but there will be a review on King Kong 2005 and Kong Skull Island 2017. Is that how you pronounce it? But anyways, that's a review. I will be back with more reviews later. I think the next one might be Godzilla. Tune in to find out.